In this video, I would like to talk about Autism Spectrum Disorder and GCMAF Immunotherapy. We have clinics in Osaka, Kobe, and Tokyo. Our head office and cell processing center are in Osaka. Saisei Mirai is expanding overseas and now has several branches around the world. Our goal is to help cure serious diseases, such as cancer, autism, and infectious diseases. Saisei Mirai is conducting joint research with six universities in Japan. A wide variety of researchers from non-medical fields such as engineering, science, veterinary, and pharmacy have come together to develop new treatments. I'm now going to introduce you to GCMAF. So, what is GCMAF? What is colostrum math? And what is whey math? I'll explain a little bit about macrophages and the different types of GCMAF. In particular, second generation GCMAF, exciting new colostrum MAF, and whey MAF. And I'd like to report that we have succeeded in producing recombinant MAF in Japan. My hypothesis of GCMAF and oral MAF is that they could increase the number of young stem cells of macrophages in the blood and tissues and they could work for rejuvenation of each tissue, having young and active innate cellular immunity. I'm going to talk about some basics of GC protein and GC math. So what is GC protein? GC protein is short for group specific component protein, also known as vitamin D binding protein. It is a glycoprotein of about 56 kilodaltons in size, present in human serum. It is a member of the albumin superfamily. GC protein works as a vitamin D carrier protein and also scavenges G-actin released by cell lysis. GC protein is the precursor of the most powerful macrophage activating factor, GCMAF. There are six major subtypes of GC protein, including the homodimers and heterodimers of GC1F, GC1S, and GC2. Dr. Yamamoto and Dr. Hori used their blood samples to produce GCMAF, which was GC1F1F subtype. This is one reason why GC1F1F has been the focus in the treatment of various diseases. Our phagocytic activity data shows that GCMAF produced from all subtypes have high activity. This diagram also shows that GC1S have three different sugar structures proposed by different researchers. This is a proposed scheme for the conversion of GC1F protein to GCMAF by Dr. Yamamoto and Dr. Hori of Tokushima University from 1993. They have demonstrated that inflammation results in the hydrolysis of terminal galactose and sialic acid of the GC1F1F protein. The hydrolysis is mediated by membrane-bound beta-galactosidase present on activated B cells and sialidase on T cells. Finally, GCMAF is produced like this. The image people have of macrophages is that of hungry white blood cells which engulf bacteria and other pathogens, moving like amoebas. Macrophages are very dynamic cells and found in essentially all tissues. Macrophages have very important functions, such as phagocytosis of pathogens, removal of dead or dying cells, and scavenging cellular and other debris. They play a critical role in adaptive immunity, wound healing, tissue repair, and regeneration. Today, I want to emphasize the importance of their tissue repair and regeneration functions by showing you some specific clinical case reports about that. Macrophages have an amazing ability of detecting, engulfing, and destroying pathogens, which are shown in this diagram. You can also see what phagocytosis looks like under the microscope in the picture on the right. The purple color is mice macrophages, 
which have been activated by GCMAF. They are phagocytizing, ingesting, opsonized red blood cells which are clear in color and indicated by the arrows. We use these cells for our phagocytic assay to measure the activity level of GCMAF. Many people have asked me what I think about M1 and M2 macrophages. In my opinion, M1 and M2 macrophage theory sounds good, but it doesn't match the clinical facts very well. Until 2000, macrophages had been classified into M1 and M2 macrophages. In 2004, macrophages were classified into four types, M1, M2A, M2B, and M2C. In 2014, macrophages were classified into seven types, and then later there were more types added. According to Professor Hori of Tokushima University, it isn't possible to classify macrophages into only M1 and M2 types because macrophages are moving like amoebas, having more than a thousand antigens on their cell surface. In this video, you can see how macrophages engulf foreign substances using their cell membrane like hands, like this. This is a macrophage engulfing small magnetic beads, and here you can see how a macrophage is extending its membrane to catch a bead. This is called lamellipodia. This video shows how macrophages are digesting foreign substances. In this case, they are pH-sensitive beads. Over time, the pH inside phagosomes is going down and you may notice the color of beads inside macrophages is changing from brown to red. Here I'll show you two videos. The first video shows the control group. Macrophages are just passing by around the beads. The second video shows the group activated by new serum math. This is a macrophage and these are small magnetic beads. These pictures were taken by Professor Nishikata of Conan University using a scanning electron microscope. In this picture, compared with the control group, you can see how a macrophage is ruffling its membrane. This macrophage is activated by our new serum math. This is a macrophage activated by GC math. The green color shows actin. As you can see, lamellipodia formation and actin accumulation were observed just five minutes after activation by GC math, and over time these changes grew in strength. Once again, in this diagram, you can see how macrophages exist in nearly all tissues throughout the body, such as the brain, the skin, the lungs, and the gut. I'd like to emphasize how important tissue resident macrophages are in terms of tissue repair, regeneration, and rejuvenation of damaged or even normal tissue. One concept is that macrophages can be found in three states, triggered, primed, an aged or stressed state. GC math therapy is believed to maintain macrophages in a primed activated state, ready to combat pathogens without producing high levels of cytokines or inflammation. Macrophages are also known to play a critical role in anti-tumor immunity. They can infiltrate into tumors and are found in most tumor sites. Generally, it is considered that GCMAF increases phagocytic activity, superoxide radical generation, and has anti-angiogenic and anti-tumor effects. We have also observed that GCMAF increases the number of monocytes in the blood and increases the rate of maturation of dendritic cells in vitro, 
according to the experiments done by Dr. Kubo at Saise Marai. We regularly test GCMAF activity at Tokushima University as well as do other GCMAF research there. Our GCMAF has been tested for phagocytic activity using mouse macrophages and sheep red blood cells. Second generation GCMAF and oral MAF both have high phagocytic activity. This experiment was conducted by Dr. Uto at Tokushima University. Oral MAF strongly activated phagocytosis of gut macrophages of mice. It induces almost the same level of potent activation as lipopolysaccharide. This means GCMAF made from vitamin D binding protein is very well suited to the activation of macrophages in the mammalian gut. IL-1 beta and TNF alpha are major inflammatory cytokines associated with autoimmune diseases. Our oral MAF does not result in the production of these pro-inflammatory cytokines. This next experiment was conducted by my colleague, Dr. Osaki, at Totori University. In this preliminary experiment, colostrum MAF induced elevated levels of helper T cells and killer T cells in healthy dogs. In this preliminary experiment, colostrum MAF suppressed the production of interleukin-4 and interleukin-6. These Th2 cytokines are associated with allergic diseases. The first generation GC MAF was developed by Dr. Yamamoto in 1991. It was Dr. Yamamoto's achievement accomplished in collaboration with Tokushima University. However, we do not use the first generation GC MAF for clinical applications anymore in Japan because of its low concentration, low stability, and risk of cross-contamination, especially when the vitamin D3 affinity column is used repeatedly. Therefore, I believe that this column needs to be disposable. Second generation GC MAF was developed by Saisei Murai and Tokushima University in 2010. The advantages of second generation GC MAF are high concentration, 1500 nanograms per 0.5 milliliters per dose, and significantly higher stability and macrophage activating capability. Oral GC MAF was developed by Saisei Murai and Tokushima University in 2014. It is derived from vitamin D binding protein. I would like to add that using colostrum as a source of vitamin D binding protein is not important. A one milligram capsule has activity equivalent to that of 100 nanogram purified GC MAF. An enteric acid resistant capsule is used for oral administration to target the pyres patches in the gut. Powder form oral MAF is used for sublingual administration in the mouth. We now have three forms of oral MAF, enteric acid resistant capsules, candies, and powder. Oral GC MAF is registered as a food product in Japan and Sweden and is registered as a dietary supplement in the US, Lithuania, and Ukraine. Malt, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, constitutes the most extensive part of the human lymphoid tissue. The components of malt are subdivided into galt, gut associated lymphoid tissue, balt, bronchus associated lymphoid tissue ball dyer's tonsillar ring, and so on. These are the largest macrophage pools in the body. 
Many diseases are connected to malt. Oral math is aimed at directly activating a large number of macrophages in these sites. I'm going to talk a little about gut immunity and leaky gut syndrome. They are also considered to be connected to autism and autoimmune diseases. Gut bacteria have an intricate relationship with our immune system, and they play a critical role in training immune cells. The gut is surrounded by the largest concentration of immune tissues in the body. An increase in the permeability of the gut lining and an imbalance in the gut flora have powerful impacts on the immune system. Now I'm going to talk about autism and microglia in the brain. The blood-brain barrier appears to play a critical role in many diseases. The advent of two-photon microscopy made it possible to watch the blood-brain barrier in a living, breathing mouse. This is amazing. Now we can watch how microglia are moving around and coming in to protect and repair the blood-brain barrier as tight junctions. Malfunctioning microglia could lead to neuroinflammation and a wide variety of brain diseases. An interesting article entitled The Constant Gardeners was published in the journal Nature in 2012. It suggests that microglia, the macrophages of the brain, seem to be crucial for pruning back neurons during development. Neurodevelopmental disorders such as autism and schizophrenia are often associated with faulty pruning. The picture shows a neuron from the brain of a young person with autism. A paper published in the journal Neuron in 2014 reports that young people with autism have excess synapses in the brain. Excess is due to a slowdown in the normal brain pruning process during development. The excessive synapses may have profound effects on how the brain functions. GCMAF may be an ideal candidate for this role by activating microglia in the brain without side effects. An interesting article entitled A Non-Inflammatory Role for Microglia in Autism Spectrum Disorders was published in the journal Frontiers in Neurology in 2016. This article suggests that non-inflammatory roles of microglia become increasingly recognized as critical to normal neurodevelopment. And it also suggests that normal neurodevelopment represents a complex interplay between microglial cells and synaptic wiring. But we still need to find out the genetic and epigenetic etiology, neurosynaptic disconnectivity, and abnormal microglia and immune findings in autism. An important article was published in the journal Nature Reviews Immunology in 2018. It suggests several very important points. Microglia arise solely from yolk sac erythromyeloid precursors. Microglial precursors migrate to the brain parenchyma and quickly diverge from other tissue resident macrophages in terms of their gene expression profile under the influence of unknown brain-derived signals. Microglia interact with almost all CNS components during embryonic and postnatal development when they carry out a large number of non-immune tasks that are crucial for brain function. Another important point is that microglia have multidimensional activation states in CNS disease and injuries. These points are most important by any standard. So what is autism? Autism spectrum disorder is a serious neurodevelopmental disorder that impairs a child's ability to communicate and interact with others. Especially restricted repetitive behaviors, interests and activities can cause significant impairment in social, occupational and other areas of functioning. 
Autism is not a single condition. It's actually a spectrum of disorders. On the left side of the rainbow, you can see a very high functioning autism that can be Einstein and people are very, very talented. On the right side of the rainbow, you can see classic autism with severe learning disability. In the US, the CDC Centers for Disease Control and Prevention increased the estimate of autism's prevalence by 15% from one in 68 to one in 59 children. The trend has been steeply upwards since the early 1990s, not only in the US, but globally. Also, the definition of autism has changed through the decades. Over the 80s and 90s, the diagnostic criteria expanded to include more children. But the new government data still cannot tell us exactly why the increase has occurred so quickly. So what's happening in the brain of autistic children and what causes ASD epidemic? The most common answer would be genetic predispositions plus environmental triggers. Environmental triggers include chemical overload, infectious agents, inflammation, mercury, aluminum, heavy metals, and so on. An interesting article entitled Prenatal and Infant Exposure to Ambient Pesticides and Autism Spectrum Disorder in Children, Population-Based Case Control Study, was published in the British Medical Journal in February of 2021. This is California's main agricultural region, Central Valley. In the US, sometimes helicopters are used to spray pesticides from the sky. An offspring's risk of autism spectrum disorder increases following prenatal exposure to ambient pesticides within 2000 meters of their mother's residence during pregnancy. Infant exposure could further increase risks for autism spectrum disorder with comorbid intellectual disability. Now I'm going to talk about GCMath autism protocols and case studies. Dr. Heather and I conducted a pilot study for autism using oral GC math in Australia. In this pilot study, when we increased the dose of oral math too quickly, we observed increased hyperactivity in some cases. However, these children tend to get better very quickly with hyperactivity. So now I increase the dose of oral GC math a little more slowly. Each patient shows different response to oral GC math. This is a GC math capsule protocol. We recommend powder or candy if the patient finds it difficult to swallow the capsules. Preferentially given to children with the worst gut issues, we quickly came to realize that every child is completely different and they all ended up stopping on different doses. Many didn't reach the maximum. Some pushed past it and still got great results. This is a GCMath injection protocol for autistic children. GCMath injection is produced from human serum. We often produce GCMath injection using the blood of the patient's parents. See the world through autistic eyes. This video was produced by the National Autistic Society of the UK. It puts you inside the body of a child with autism and makes you feel what this boy feels, walking in his shoes. The brains of children and adolescents with autism are not underconnected. They are overly connected, and this relates to autism severity, such as repetitive behaviors and restricted interests.
six, seven, eight, nine. Take my hand. I'm autistic and I just get too much information. I got an email from a doctor in Chile saying, Dear Dr. Toshio, I wanted to communicate the progress of one of my patients. Sarah is now four years old and at the age of two, she was diagnosed with autism. Four weeks ago, we started the treatment with GCMAF in gummies, candy, and I want to share with you the evolution of Sarah. Case report. Autism, a four-year-old female. Before the oral MAF treatment, she was unengaged and always put on a serious face. She was struggling with motor skills and could not walk on a suspension bridge very well. She had limited speech and difficulty interacting with other people. After a month of treatment, her face is much more relaxed and she began to show improvement in interaction with her mother and started using new phrases and words. Her motor skills improved and now she was able to walk on the same suspension bridge. She danced on the stage for the first time and was not scared with all the screaming and applause. Her doctor mentioned that she noticed the improvement day by day. She is more connected, interacts a little more, and has a more natural and spontaneous look. This is an eight-year-old male with autism. Symptoms are limited speech with only words, difficulty understanding, and he had no friends. He started taking oral math, one capsule per day for the first week, and then two capsules per day in April of 2019. Within a few months, his speaking and understanding improved and he began helping other people. Before the oral GC math therapy, he was moving and jumping frequently. After a month of treatment, his moving and jumping decreased. Six months later, he started trying new types of food. Now he can play video games and eat vegetables. After I had a consultation with him, he said bye to me, waving his right hand. This is a seven-year-old male with Asperger's with attention deficit hyperactivity. His symptoms are limited eye contact, crying, and screaming very often. He is also very hyperactive. He started taking oral GC math, one capsule daily, in June of 2018. Within one week, his parents noticed his symptoms had improved and increased the oral GC math to three capsules. Before he started with oral math, he often experienced a meltdown, cried for no reason, and licked his hands. He could not concentrate or follow the study. After one week of oral math, taking one capsule per day, he was able to follow the study with his fingers pointing out the words. He was still screaming. He had been afraid of the forest for four years after he became autistic. However, he was able to go into the forest and ate the blueberries. His mother was very surprised about that. After one month of treatment, he was taking three capsules per day. He started to show good eye contact. He started showing that he is thinking about the questions and answers at school. Although he shows great improvement, he was experiencing some meltdowns as well. After four months of treatment, he answers his mother's questions now. His eye contact is good. However, he still jumps on the bed. We started considering giving him GC math injections in addition to oral GC math. After five months of treatment, he was able to sit still and wait for his father and brother for 20 minutes at the theme park. That had never happened before. After 10 months of treatment, he was able to talk about pictures in his book he became more focused and more curious, and he's speaking three languages. After one year of treatment, he continues showing good eye contact and is able to count. 
I was only consulting him online for the whole time, and I finally had a chance to meet him in person in his country. I said hello to him, and he suddenly hugged me. I got an email from a doctor in Indonesia saying I have about four parents of patients with autism that gave very good reports about oral math. The reports include less aggression, more speech, less stimming, and more eye contact. This is a case report of a 19-year-old female with autism. Symptoms include difficulties in communication and interaction with people. Her mother has been teaching her piano since she was eight years old. She slowly progresses, but has difficulty performing and finishing her music. In September 2015, she started taking oral math two capsules daily. In two months, she was able to play the whole piece of music for the first time in front of an audience. In three months, she was able to put candies into goodie bags for the first time without tearing them. In four months, she was able to participate in volunteer work. Now she is calm and able to understand jokes and laugh with them. This is the case of a nine-year-old male with autism. Symptoms include limited speech, limited eye contact, screaming, and tears. Symptoms suddenly occurred when he was two and a half years old. He started taking oral math two capsules daily in February of 2019. Within three weeks, his parents noticed his symptoms improved and he could go to the refrigerator to get the math bottle by himself. After one month of treatment, he was able to repeat what his mother says. This is a 22 month old male with autism. He was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder when he was 10 months old. He had many treatments without good results. He started taking oral math, powder of one capsule combined with honey, twice a day. In exactly three weeks, he stopped taking oral math because he didn't like it and spat it out. He was very hyperactive at the beginning. This is now settling down and he has shown great improvement. After three weeks of oral math therapy, he has shown great improvements in happiness, has been smiling more, and is more engaged. His bubbling has increased a lot, making more sounds. He is still struggling with motor skills, although he is improving with walking up and down stairs. He completed a nine-piece puzzle for the first time. He also recognized his sister's name, pointing to her and smiling at her. This case report is for a four-year-old female with autism. Symptoms include limited eye contact and very limited speaking with only a few words. She didn't smile, often screamed, and played alone. She had no relationships with people. She also had stereotyped handshakes. She started taking GC math injection 0.1 milliliters to 0.2 milliliters once a week in June of 2017. Within a few months, she gradually began smiling, having friends, and speaking more words. At the beginning of GC math treatment, she was banging on the floor with her hands many times. This symptom first occurred when she was two years old. In five months, she was still banging on the floor, but these repetitive handshakes became less and less, and she was able to read a picture book. In nine months, she is able to communicate with people, asking questions and also answering questions with a smile. This is a six-year-old female with autism. Symptoms include no speech, seizures, sleep disturbance, and weeping. Symptoms began when she was two years old. According to her mother, symptoms occurred after receiving an MMR vaccination. Before the vaccination, she had no developmental problems. She received anti-epilepsy medicine, antidepressants, vitamins, and so on. She started taking oral math one to two capsules daily in January of 2018, but discontinued it. Later, I'll explain why. She started taking GC math injection 
0.25 milliliters three times per week and MAF spray, one push three times daily. Now the MAF spray is discontinued. We recommend the MAF powder instead. Please use the powder protocol I shared in this video earlier. After starting oral MAF, her weeping increased, wearing a blanket over her head. Sometimes these strange actions can happen for autistic children, so I changed from oral MAF capsules to MAF spray for her and gave her a GC MAF injection, 0.25 milliliters three times per week. Her GC MAF was produced using her mother's blood. Her weeping increased, so sometimes she wore a blanket over her head. In just two weeks, her symptoms improved a lot. She visited our clinic and was playing with her mother quietly, although she was afraid of needles. After she went back to her country, I heard from her mother that she is doing very well at school with other children. Now let's take a look at one of the hyper-functioning autistic patients. Before the oral MAF therapy, her speech was okay, but she could not answer. She could not respond adequately to questions. She had poor eye contact, and her facial expressions were unusual. After two months of oral MAF therapy at two capsules daily, her communication improved, she had good eye contact, she responded appropriately, and her face looked natural, like a normal child. Summary. GC-MAF Immunotherapy for Autism. We recommend our oral GC-MAF and injections for autism treatments. In the beginning, some patients may experience increased hyperactivity and mood swings. However, this indicates a good response to GC-MAF. These patients tend to get better quickly with increased hyperactivity. One course of GC-MAF immunotherapy for autism is around six months, although it depends on each patient. We started producing second-generation GC-MAF in Japan in 2011. In the last eight years, we have treated around 2,800 patients in Japan and around 5,460 patients overseas. Current indications for GC-MAF include various infectious diseases, cancer, autism, multiple sclerosis, chronic fatigue syndrome, atopic dermatitis, and so on. There are many indications. Thank you very much for your attention today, and please feel free to contact us at any time through the information you can see on the screen.